I'm going to be showing you how you can create your very own Moonlight Lake painting. So to start with, I've got everything I need for this tutorial in front of me. I'm using an 8x10 stretched canvas. You can paint this in landscape or portrait. It's totally up to you, depending on where you want to place this. I have a few different size brushes. I have a bigger one, a slanted medium one, and then I have a tiny little pointed one as well. And then I have an old brush here, which has got slightly harder bristles. You'll find that these are normally the cheaper brushes, but they're quite good for creating bushes and trees in our background. I've then got some kitchen towel. This is just to dab my brushes off with and remove any excess paint from the brushes. A cup of water. And then over in my paint palette, I only have three different shades and you can use any color paints that you want for this. But I'm starting with an ultramarine, which is a blue color. I then have a deep turquoise and a pale olive. I'm starting with my big brush, just dipping it in the water, just to loosen up those bristles slightly. You can give it a dab on your kitchen towel or a little scrape on the side of your glass. And then moving over to my paint palette, I'm just going to start by mixing up my first shade. So I'm starting with quite a large amount of white as my base for this. And then just picking up some of the blue. Now don't worry if your paint colours don't look the same as mine. You can have creative licence to do whatever you want with your own painting. As long as you enjoy the colours that you're creating, that's all that matters. Just give your paint a nice mix into the white. And if you are using acrylic paint today, you might just want to add a little bit of water as you go, just to keep the paint nice and fluid. This especially helps when we come to blending our background. I'm just adding some more blue to my palette because I've run out and I just want to make my shade slightly darker. And I'm gonna carry on just mixing that in. When you're ready, we're going to focus this on the top section of our canvas. So I'm just swiping it along the very top section, just using backwards and forwards motions, just making sure that the canvas is nice and covered up. If you're painting on a stretched canvas today, you might also want to paint the sides, the top and the bottom as you go, so everything is nice and covered and you don't see any of the white canvas behind. I like using diagonal strokes, just going backwards and forwards, just really working that paint in. And then we're going to do the exact same on the bottom section of our canvas. This is essentially going to be a mirror image of the sky. Just nice long swoops all the way along, backwards and forwards, making sure it's all covered up. Depending on the size of your canvas, I've just brought this paint colour up an inch, maybe just an inch and a half. We're going to be blending our next shade into this. We want to make sure that we've got enough that we're still going to see this colour on the top of our sky and on the base of our water. I'm now just going to give my brush a good wash in the water. I like to give it a tap on the base of the cup just to help lift off any of that excess paint. Moving back over to a paint palette, we're going to mix up our next shade. So again, starting with some white, I'm now just going to add some of the turquoise and give that a mix in. I should still have quite a nice amount of water on the brush to mix in with this paint, but I'm going to add a little bit more. We want to make sure the paint is nice and fluid so that it blends nicely on the canvas with the shade we've already applied. So whenever you're ready, we're now going to blend this onto our painting. So the way I like to do this is I like to paint this new colour just underneath our first shade, leaving a very small gap. Again, we're just going to do backwards and forwards motions, making sure that section is all covered. And then as you start to have not as much paint on your brush, what we're going to start to do is very carefully and slowly blend these colours up and down into the next colour. So I've done the same thing, so just using that mirror image. Just covering up those sections just below and above our first blue shade. 
what I'm now doing is I'm just using very gentle brush strokes, just backwards and forwards, and I'm overlapping that line. Now, what we want to do here is we want to make sure that we're really trusting the process. I think this is where people have trouble with blending is they're too scared to paint on top of your first colour. But actually, this is what gives us a nice, hazy ombre effect with these two shades. So as you can see, I'm really working the brush backwards and forwards, straight across the canvas, bringing it up into that blue shade and just really working over that line to get that nice, hazy ombre effect. Now I'm going to do exactly the same. With the bottom line, I haven't added any more paint. I'm just blending in those two colours. And because they're still damp underneath, it should be quite easy just to blend them together. I'm working fairly quickly because I don't want the paint to dry. And you can see I'm really sweeping the brush along quite a few times to make sure that it's nice and blended. When you're happy with that, we're now just going to give our brush another wash in the water again. I'm just going to give it a little tap on the base of the cup to lift off this paint colour. Dabbing it on the side of the glass and a little dab on the kitchen towel as well. And then moving back over to our paint palette, we're now just going to mix up our next colour. So I'm going to use this pale olive, but I'm just going to mix it in with a corner of my turquoise. This is going to be the lightest shade of our background. I always just want to create a sort of lagoon-like colour. Remember, you can always experiment with your colours. If you don't like a colour you've mixed up, wash your brush and you can start again. I've just added a bit of water to this just to keep it fluid. And we're going to focus this light colour in the section in the middle of our canvas where we've got blank stripe. So I'm just using the brush carefully just to fill in that gap first, trying not to get any of the other wet paint on this colour. And once you've sort of filled that all in, we're just going to do the same blending technique. So again, just sweeping that brush backwards and forwards across the canvas. Don't be afraid to overlap your previous colour. Really just push lightly, you don't have to push too too hard with this. I'm just using the very tips of my paintbrush. And I'm almost trying to get into a bit of a rhythm with it. Again, working quite quickly and really swiping the brush all the way across the canvas. You almost want the bristles to lift off as you get to the end. And if you've painted the sides for the rest of the canvas, then just don't forget to paint the sides here as well, just to continue that colour around the edges. Remember, we're painting nature. So we're painting the sky and we're painting water. So it's a very, very forgiving subject to paint. You can always go a bit more abstract. It's actually quite nice if you see the texture from the bristles of your brush and your paint. And don't worry if you're struggling with the blending. It's something that comes with practice. The more you do it, the sort of easier it becomes. This is all going to be background at the end because we're going to be adding our silhouette and all of our details on the top. So remember, this is just the first layer of our painting. Now I'm just going to give my brush a good wash in the water. We're now going to move over to the fun part, which is creating the stars in the background of our painting. So I'm just picking up some white paint, moving it over to a spare area of my palette. And we just want to make sure we're mixing in quite a lot of water into this white. Don't worry if your water is a little bit blue, it doesn't matter. Essentially, we want to create an almost milky like consistency with this white paint. Now, what this will do, this will just help us when we come to scatter the stars on the background. It will just make sure that they're nice and small rather than being too big. The thicker the paint, the more sort of Jackson Pollock like it is, which is absolutely fine if that's what you want to go for. But I think it's just nice to start with a thinner consistency of the white. So I'm just really mixing that water in. 
And then I'm going to go for a tool which is slightly unconventional and use an old toothbrush. Don't worry if you haven't got a toothbrush, you can just use a paintbrush. But I'm just dipping those bristles into the white and I'm now just going to fire the paint using my index finger, pulling back the bristles and letting the bristles go all over the canvas, kind of moving the paintbrush around and letting go of those bristles. And it will just give you that nice scattered star-like effect. Now we want to do this all over the canvas because even though we've got water on the base and we've got the sky at the top, it's a mirror image of each other. You'll also find that a little bit of paint goes quite a long way, but just add any more whenever you need to. I'm next, just going to pick up some black paint and add it to my palette. We're going to mix up our next shade now, which is going to be a darker tone for our silhouette. So I'm just going to create a navy colour. So picking up some of my blue, I'm going to add a little bit of turquoise to it. Then I'm going to introduce a tiny little bit of black. Just add a little bit at a time. You can always add more. And that should darken up the paint slightly and give you more of a navy tone. You can do any shade that you want for this. If you want to go in with pure black paint, you totally can. I'm just going to give that a really good mix. I'm now just going to prepare my brush before I go on and paint in the horizon line. So we just want to make sure that we haven't got too much paint on our brush. So I'm just dashing off any of the excess by pushing it down on a spare bit of my palette. This should bring the bristles into a nice point and it'll make it easier for us to draw a straight line with. I'm now going to focus on painting this in the middle section. Maybe find the middle and then bring it down ever so slightly. And we're just going to do a line going across. Now, don't worry if this isn't neat or straight. You might find as well on your canvas that you've got some natural grooves along the canvas, which you can use as a guide. Now I'm going to create the foliage which sits on top of this line. So I'm picking up my slightly more harder bristled brush but you can use any brush that you want. And just using some of the same paint, I'm now just gonna focus on stippling, which is essentially dabbing the paint on top of that line. Now we just want to create different sort of patterns here. We just want it to look nice and natural and free. And these are going to basically be our bushes, trees, foliage, anything that you like in the background where we've been nice and neat with our background, we're now sort of adding these extra details in in a more freeing, sporadic way. So I've just added a sort of tree-like shape. I'm just going to go along the top of this line. Don't worry if you go underneath the line slightly because we're going to be adding our ripples underneath. It's also quite nice if you just stipple a couple of sporadic, random, trees or bushes or leaves that are poking out where you can see the sky through them. I also think it's quite nice to vary the shapes and sizes of these as you go along the line, just so it doesn't look like one straight line. So just make sure you're sort of adding maybe a few areas which are slightly higher and then a few which have got more of a valley or a V shape. I'm really not pushing down hard with my paintbrush at all. You can just carry on doing this all the way along this line. When you're ready, you can almost go back in and add any more extra leaves or bushes that you want. Sometimes it's nice to look away for a second, look at something else and then come back to your painting with fresh eyes.
I'm now just taking my tiny small brush and I'm just adding a few tiny little lines, just connecting where I've got these sort of tree-like shapes so it looks like there are a few trunks and branches, just linking the leaves to the ground. This is just an added extra, you don't have to do this if you don't want to. So taking some of this same colour and using the same technique of dashing off the paint, we're just going to draw a kind of crisp line underneath just to reintroduce where that horizon is. So you can always bring this down slightly. If you feel like you've been a bit messy underneath the line, this is your opportunity to cover it all up a little bit. Again, don't worry about being too neat with this at all. We're now going to start adding in our reflections and our ripples. So this is the fun bit. We're going to prepare our brush the same way. And what we want to do is we just want to create really thin diagonal lines just underneath where we've got all of our foliage and we've got this horizon. Now I'm just pushing my brush down really lightly and we want to make sure that we're being sporadic with this. We don't want the lines to be too uniform and neat but you'll find that they're slightly longer just underneath where we've got our horizon and then they're a little bit more sporadic as we get down it's nice also to bear in mind where you might have a tree or a bush that's slightly higher. You just want to reflect that in the ripples. So you'll have sort of the area directly below the tree, for example. The ripples will come down slightly lower just to show that shadow in the water. Now, sometimes with this, less is more. So I'd feel like just do a couple of lines, take a step back, have a little look. And then you can go ahead and add more as and when you need to. You can always fill in some of the gaps. You might want to give the lines a little bit of a wobble. This is basically just showing the sort of shadow and ripples on the top of our water. And then you can do exactly the same on the other side. Again, I'm just pushing down very, very lightly. If you want to give this a practice first on a spare bit of paper, just to get the sort of feel of it, then definitely do. But it is a, quite a forgiving technique just because we are, we are just adding depth into the water and it, we want it to look free, we want it to look natural, so don't be too hard on yourself. Now just adding a few ripples as well into the middle section. We'll be going in afterwards, once we've added in our moon, we'll be adding a few highlights into these ripples just to show the reflection of the moon. So this is just the first layer here, just to show the shadow. Now just going to give my paintbrushes a good wash. We've finished with all of them. I'm moving over to my small tiny paintbrush and this is where I'm just going to decide where I want my moon. So I'm going to place my moon in the center of my canvas. I'm just doing a very, very light, small circle. Again, don't worry if this is not neat or straight. You could have a hazy night. It doesn't need to be a perfect circle at all, but we're just going to start really tiny and then you can make it bigger. And I think it's always worth bearing in mind how big your canvas is. If you've got a tiny little canvas, you just want to make sure that the moon is all relative to what's around it. I've just added some water to my brush and I'm just adding that to the edges of my circle. And then I'm going back in with some more white paint on the tip of my brush just to make sure the middle of the moon sort of pops. So that water gives you a little bit more of a hazy light look. And then the white paint in the middle just really shows the reflection of the moon. You might want to even just dab some of the paint on there so it's nice and bright. And then taking some more of this white, we're now gonna focus this the same way as we have with our ripples, we're just gonna focus it underneath and this is going to be the reflection of the moon in the water. So exactly the same technique, we want to do this quite sporadically, little lines, little dashes using a very light touch and we're just going to focus this 
almost in a triangle-like shape underneath where the moon is. This just adds that sort of very mystical look to the painting. You might have areas where the paint is slightly thicker as well, so you might want to go in with a little bit more paint on your brush and then other areas where it's slightly thinner, just so that you have a variety of highlight. You can always go back in afterwards with a bit of extra thick paint and just give it a bit of sparkle. We're just going to continue to add these into the water and you'll find that they kind of go a little bit thinner the further down the canvas you go. Again, just keeping with that very loose sort of triangle or upside down triangle shape. And bear in mind that you can always take a little step back, look at something else. Remember to breathe. <laughs> and if you want to, you can go back in and just add a few extra bits of highlight and sparkle and reflection in the water, maybe overlapping some of those lines that you've already done. Next up is a finishing touch. We just want to mirror image any of the bigger stars that we've got. So I've got a big one in the water and I just want to make sure that I've got the star in the sky that's reflecting that. So I'm just having a little look what I've got on the base and then just working out in the sky roughly where that will be and just making sure that if I've got a big splodge in the water, I've got the splodge in the sky as well, just so it ties everything together nicely. And I'm just using my small brush to do this, so just a tiny bit of the white paint and just adding a few of those dots into the sky. It just ties everything in nicely and adds a little finishing touch. And there you have your Midnight Moon Lake painting. I hope that you all enjoyed that. Thank you so much for joining us. If you like this video, then please do give us a little thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We bring you new tutorials all of the time so that you can get creative from home. Bye.